The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And then the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days we are not to be ignorant of what Satan doing, especially in these last days, to deceive our world. Now, I, I want to give you a teaching that's actually a very, uh, very sobering thought as well to Christians, okay? It's a very sobering thought. What I believe is that when Satan attacks you, and not only spiritually but physically as well, when uh, there are people who actually have encounters with some weird creatures or aliens and stuff like that, I really believe anything that has to do with physical and spiritual attack, the Lord can set it up. The Lord can make that happen for a reason. And he does this to discipline his saints, his children. Now, if you don't believe that, we're going to look at one, the first case right here. Let's first look at uh, Jonah chapter 1, and we'll look at verse 17. Jonah chapter 1, and we will read verse 17. Now, what did God do with Jonah? Now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now, notice right here that the Lord, he prepared this great fish to swallow up Jonah. Now, in chapter 2, there are implications here that when Jonah was in the belly of the fish, that he was also in hell. So, I don't know if this fish may have been some sort of spiritual or some kind of creature that can have access to the center of the earth to hell, or that Jonah died in the belly of the fish and went to hell. Either or is fine. But the thing is this, is that what's really interesting is that when you look at Jonah 2 and compare that with Jonah 4, go to Jonah chapter 4, God did another preparation for Jonah. So we saw Jonah 1, 17, he prepared a great fish. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 7, what did he prepare next? He prepared a worm. This worm ate up the shelter that Jonah was underneath at, the shade of this branch that Jonah was underneath at, and this worm ruined it. And God sent a fish to swallow up Jonah. Why? Because th these two things happened when Jonah was backsliding. Now, here's the thing. In the Bible, what's very interesting is this. What is Satan likened towards? What kind of creatures is Satan likened towards? He is likened, his class we know, is that he is aquatic reptilian. So this is proven at the book of Isaiah. He is known as the dragon that is in the sea, the serpent that is in the sea. So he's a sea creature. Not only that, Satan is also known as Beelzebub, lord of the what? Flies, lord of the flies. But not only that, in hell, as a child of the devil, you are known as what? Worms, for the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. Now here's something that's pretty interesting. So, this is not proof, provable doctrine, this part. But what if these two creatures were referring to something satanic? What if these two creatures were referring to some kind of satanic, reptilian, or some sort of creatures, and that the Lord prepared, it says the Lord prepared, right? The Lord prepared these two things to what? Punish Jonah's backsliding. Now, let's assume these were innocent creatures, they're not satanic. Does my conclusion hold that the Lord can send satanic, demonic creatures to punish people? Can the Lord uh, allow his children, uh, when they mess up in sin, to be turned over to Satan? Yes, look at 1 Corinthians 5. For the destruction of the flesh, flesh, 1 Corinthians 5. This is a sobering thought you should think about, folks. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and then I believe it's verse 5. To deliver such an one, okay, this guy's a saved person, according to verse 4. His spirit's saved. He's a saved Christian. But in verse 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the what? Destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Look at that. This is a case of a saved Christian. Saved Christian whose body, whose flesh 
is attacked by Satan. And God can allow that to happen. You might say, no, I don't believe it. Look at, uh, did you read Job chapter 1? Satan, he cannot attack a Christian or a saint unless he what? He gets God's permission. So here's the thing is that uh, I'm not saying that any alien activity or any kind of weird sea creature activity is something prepared by God and he allowed those uh, horrible consequences and catastrophes to happen to a lot of victims. But I'll tell you this much is that sometimes he'll allow, uh, sometimes he deliberately plans those situations to fulfill his divine purpose. You might say, why would he do that? He can do that for judgment. It's very possible. If you don't believe me, go to Revelation 9. This is definite proof. I really believe that. Look at Revelation 9. Revelation chapter 9. Look at these creatures. They come out of hell. But you're going to find out that it's the Lord that set this thing up. The Lord is the one that released all these weird, demonic, reptilian, whatnot creatures, these mutants. Look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given what? The key of the bottomless pit. Look at this. This fifth angel is going to release something demonic from the bottomless pit of hell. Look at verse 3. And there came out of the smoke, what? Locusts, bugs, right? Remember, Satan is likened to what? Insects, worms. Let's keep reading here. Uh, there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was what? Commanded them. See that? Commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, etc. But look at this one. If you look at verse... Uh, seven, they had faces like men. Verse eight, hair like women, teeth like lions. This is like a chimera, a mutant type of beast form. Not only that, who's the king at verse 11? Connected to Satan once more, connected to Judas Iscariot, the Antichrist. Verse 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is what? Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name, notice, Apollyon. So you'll see right here that from verses 1 through 11, there's no doubt these satanic creatures were released by God. God can prepare satanic creatures for his divine judgment. And in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, that's very possible, we see in the case with saved Christians. So this is, and he did that in the Old Testament too, Old Testament with the saints. If God did that with the saints during the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and the tribulation, that's pretty much every dispensation, is it not? If God has done that through every dispensa dispensation, what makes you think he'll make an exception with you? So the thing is this, is that uh, as you may have heard from me in the teaching, most of what we see today with this quote-unquote aliens, reptilians, mutants, chimeras, whatever you want to call it. Most of them do not come from outer space. They do travel around outer space, Revelation 12. But mostly they don't come from there. They mostly come from what? The bottom of the sea. And from, why? Because that's where hell is located. That's where hell is located. So here's the thing is that uh, now you got these movies that's coming out with these weird sea creatures. You got Leviathan. You got, I think they had a recent movie with a big shark. Megalodon, okay then. So Megalodon, those kind of stuff. Who knows, maybe Jonah was swallowed up by some sort of Megalodon. It's a great fish. Jesus called it a big whale. And this thing seemed to have access toward, it had access toward the bottom of the earth and toward hell, it seemed like. But even if it's not, we see throughout the Bible that in the book of Job as well as Hosea, there is those demonic creatures in the sea. I will send the serpent and he shall bite them. Leviathan. So the thing is this, is that whenever you, you have these alien kidnappings, whenever you have these demonic activities going on, weird creatures underneath the bottom of the sea, uh, disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle and whatnot, all these crazy instances. 
Sometimes you have to seriously uh, ask yourself this question, and sometimes you have to look at your life as a safe Christian. Don't think that this will not happen to you. If you are backslidden, you're not right with God, the Lord might just let Satan loose and just send one of his creatures to torment you. And if you don't think that's possible, you saw 1 Corinthians 5, 5. Flesh, destruction, destruction, destruction of the flesh turned over to Satan. You saw what he did with Revelation 9. He releases them. Not only that, even in the millennium he does it. Every dispensation he does that. Revelation 20, the king of all these reptilians, the king of all these demonic forces and mutant. How, did, how does he get out of the bottomless pit? Because God releases him. God prepares, God releases these things. So this is very, uh, a very sobering thought, and that's why it's very important that you've got to live your Christian life clean. Now, Christians should not be fearful and paranoid of these demonic attacks. Do you know why? Because if you're living right with God, and you're underneath the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no way God's going to have his temple, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, to be terrorized and tormented by devils. He's not going to allow that if you're going to live right for him. But man, you better be careful, is that if you're, if you're going to abuse this body and destroy this body, God might as well put this body to further destruction by the devil. 